Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we beseech thee graciously to behold this thy family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was contented to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. See, my servant shall prosper, he shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations, kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which had not been told them they shall see and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering, and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light, he shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We read now verses 1 through 11 of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? O oh my God, I cry out in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you, and were delivered. They trusted in you, and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all, 
and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit testifies, saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, and with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. The crowd replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world, if my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out again and said, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, 
not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the temple police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The crowd answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on Pilate tried to release him, but the crowd cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the crowd, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jewish people read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And 
from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus knew that all was now finished. He said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled, None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of Scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There are those among us who slip into death, and there are those among us who resist it with every ounce of their power, refusing and rejecting the dark that awaits them. What does Jesus choose? In the final moments, when the light fades for him, does he go gently or does he rage? Well, he chooses neither one. Jesus doesn't slip away, nor does he dig in his heels. John's Gospel presents his last word as a scream of triumph. It is finished. A sentence in English and a single word in New Testament Greek. This indicates not simply the end of something, but its completion. The goal accomplished. The purpose realized. But what is it that Jesus announces as finished just before he dies? It is his life, all that the Father sent him into the world to do. It is the abundant result of that life. Prophecies fulfilled, sin's power broken, the world overcome. All this finally and definitively realized. The work of a lifetime, the salvation of this world. So Jesus goes out with a shout, it is finished. The Roman imperial death machine that places Jesus on the wood ends up with nothing to brag about. The cross is not a defeat that must wait for Easter morning to be reversed. It's already an instrument and a sign of victory. And that, in part, is why we call this solemn and yet sad day Good Friday. Jesus doesn't go gently into the night. He sweats blood when he prays in Gethsemane. Yet he has no need to rage, because it is finished. It is complete. Nailed to the cross, Christ is already triumphant. 
He reigns from the cross. As Jesus dies, he conquers. The Welsh poet Dylan Thomas remembered his father as a man robust and militant for many years. But Thomas's father in his 80s became blind and weak, and so his son addressed him in a poem that opens with these lines and then closes with the same. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into the good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. He insists his father ought to shed fierce tears in resisting the death that awaits him. The poet equates these tears with a blessing. They are inspiration and example. He equates them with a curse as well, a reminder of our unavoidable mortality. Dylan Thomas sees his father, himself, and all of us, sooner or later, dying into death. He has his reasons for doing so. But Jesus sees it differently. He knows himself to be dying into God, his Father, and invites us all to accompany him when our time arrives. He knows that he's come from God and will go home to God. He has lived his life unafraid. Realizing this as he does, he knows his life is complete. For him, the light is not dying. It's becoming brighter. The rage of bitter defeat has no place, nor is what prevails some gentle weakness like an evaporation of his spirit. Jesus triumphs. He glories like a young athlete who bursts the tape at the finish line of the race. It is precisely there in his death that we begin to know him for who he is, the Prince of Life whose reign will never end the one who calls us beyond our weakness and our rage, to reign with him forever. It is finished. The life and mission of Jesus are complete. But something else is finished also, in the sense of brought to an, in, non, a, an end, a broken, a destroyed finish. And what is that? Well, I've quoted one poet, and I'll end with another, to explain what has found in. This one, this poet, is also a preacher and a priest, and his name was John Donne. Rather than issue a passionate call to rage, Donne engages in mockery and contempt that is almost playful. Listen to these lines. Death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst Thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. Amen. Dear people of God, thy heavenly Father sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, that all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death, and become heirs with him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere, according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world for its unity and witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for our own bishop, Kevin, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, for those who will be baptized, 
that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy Church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve thee through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth, and for those in authority among them, for the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth, and live in peace and concord. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with thy wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility thy dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or mind, for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for all the sick, the wounded, and the crippled, especially those who suffer from this current pandemic, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for the sorrowful and the bereaved, for prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them, and grant them the knowledge of his love, and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. O gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to thee, that they may find thy mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, thy Son Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ for those who have never heard the word of salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. O merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know thee as thou art revealed in thy Son, Jesus Christ. Let thy gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it, and bring home to thy fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world that our God and Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. 
Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. Merciful God, source of all life and health, look with compassion on thy children brought low by disease. Protect us in the midst of the grave challenges that assail us, and in thy providence grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, and success to those who work to eradicate this scourge. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to God and pray for the grace of a holy life, that with all who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ, and all those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably upon thy whole church that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of thy providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross, whereon was hung the world's salvation. O oh, come, let us adore him.
the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray thee to set thy passion, cross, and death between thy judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and peace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to thy holy church peace and concord, and to us sinners everlasting life and glory, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit livest and reignest, one God, now and forever. 